Hello everyone, welcome back, it's Thanos and I'm here with another Kaguya Summer reaction. This time it'll be Season 3, Episode 4. Okay. So, last episode we had an introduction to a new character, Shijo Maki, who is the friend of uh, Kashiwagi, and is the girl that we always see hanging around in the background um, while they're, you know, going on dates and stuff usually lurking behind pillars or uh, in hedges and stuff like that, and crying, because she obviously really likes the boy, who I don't think we have a name for yet, um, but is also apparently good friends with Kashiwagi, so that's kind of an interesting situation. We first got introduced because Kashiwagi was feeling like her boyfriend was cheating on her, but it turns out that wasn't the case. He actually had w gone to try to buy something for their six-month anniversary, and because, you know, they were mutual friends, Marky seemed like the best person to help him try to go and, you know, find it. But this would have been kind of painful for Shijo, who would have, I guess, enjoyed hanging out with him, but, you know, in that way of, oh, I like him, but I'm not going to say anything, and I'm just trying to, like, be a good friend while, you know, slowly dying on the inside. And she also did try to be sneaky and get him to pick, actually, what she considered to be the worst gift, but was, which was liked by Kashiwagi anyway. So that kind of backfired. So Ka Kashiwagi had gone to see Shinomiya for advice while Ino was sitting in, and that was a pretty funny sort of situation. We got to see Ino interact in, you know, an advice relationship type interaction for once and that was you know pretty fun but then the next section we got to see kind of a flip side where where Shijo ended up having a sort of discussion with um Shuragane and Ishigami after Shuragane accidentally stepped on her <laughs> yeah that's it sounds so weird to say it but makes sense in context yeah where we discovered more about her and turns out that she's actually a She's related to Shinomiya, apparently technically a kind of a niece, the way that the, you know, family tree works, even though they're actually the same age. And that was super interesting to see how similar they are, even though they are, you know, quite distantly related, but it seems they have some of the same characteristics, although they are, they do approach things kind of differently. There's also seems to be kind of a little tension between them. I don't know whether it's because of, you know, their relative stations within the family or anything else, but you know, that's kind of fun. Just an extra an extra thing to throw into the mix now of the cast of characters that we've already got, so that's going to be enjoyable, I think. And then in the last section we had a fun little coin game. Well, we got to see, you know, some of the, inse the insecurity held by, you know, Ishigami and Ino. And that sort of, you know, getting a bit resolved because they got to ask these questions in this sort of game session and felt the relief that they weren't, they weren't hated like they thought or disliked. So that was nice. But also at the end of it, we got kind of a resolution of sorts to a tension that had been held from basically from the end of the previous episode to that, where Shinomiya was still concerned about Shirogane having gone to the karaoke thing. And that was resolved at the end by a quiet moment just between Shirogane and Shinomiya, where Shirog Shirogane just, you know, brought up the topic fairly directly, and his saying how, like, I guess important it was for him that Shinomiya at least believed him that he didn't, you know, do anything funny on that date really sort of settled her down, I guess, you know, it pleased her to hear how much, you know, because obviously if he didn't, if he didn't care about her, then why would he care what she thought? But, you know, he wanted her to believe, and that was kind of a, you know, it was a sweet moment, although because it's this show and because she is Shinomiya, she left him hanging and <laughs> just, um, walked out without giving a direct answer, but seemingly more at ease, so. 
Anyway, this is going to be episode 4, Kaguya Shinomiya's Impossible Demand, A Kauri A Swallow Gave Birth To, Part 1. So that's a part 1, where the part 2 of which is going to be revisited later on, I assume. Because the other titles in this one are Yu Ishigami Wants to Prove Himself Worthy, and Chika Fujiwara Wants to Stay Over. Interesting. Okay, and just a reminder that these are full-length timer-based reactions, which means I won't be showing that much of the actual episode, and most of the sound is going to need to be cut out. But if you have your own copy, then you can try to sync it up and watch along with me. Season 3, Episode 4, starting in 3, 2, 1, now. I guess everyone else who is not quite so lucky in love is a little bit frustrating to see them always getting along. There was the other episode where he um he and Shuragane were giving advice to the guy, even though the guy hadn't actually come for advice, um, as Ishigami seems to have picked up on. It's more that the guy was coming in just to almost to brag. Well actually it was more that they were both just kind of playing a trick on them, I think. Uh, I think that was the time that he had the <laughs> the toilet paper. Oh wait, I might be mixing things up now. Anyway, it was funny. Just death to the relationship. It's about me. That's it. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was blushing. He almost started saying something. She was the one he was talking about, right? In that first episode? There might have been more to it than... Than him just making up a tale for to try to distract Fujiwara. <laughs> what? The Dark Souls reference.
He gained a lot from the sports festival. But he's still got some way to go. <laughs> I was gonna say that's that's incredibly honest of her. She has like an interesting interaction with um with Ishigami. <laughs> like, oh for no reason, but how would you do that? That's too involved. And it's kind of creepy. Also, oh, okay. <laughs> the the um, <laughs> innate creepiness. Well, the thing is that. Like, if you're already going out with them, then these gestures become great romantic gestures, which are sweet. But with no established relationship, it becomes kind of weird. Unfortunately. I liked him. <laughs> I think that was him trying to measure himself at those different categories. Boot camp. I suppose that's a reference that I don't get.
it would be incredibly distracting. I like the uh, the aspect ratio here. The smartphone is probably the best and the worst thing that she's <laughs> that's happened to her. I wonder if she's actually been messaging him more now. Ah, I did see properly that she was number one. I got confused for a moment, but then I remembered she's in a different grade from them. And of course she's not going to. None of them can be expected to reveal their real thoughts. <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence. Well, here's a very compelling reason now, I guess. See, that's really nice. I really liked that. I really liked that last time, the way that she helped him. That's a decent attitude.
second again. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> that Shinomiya will be spurting blood from the eyes. A decent jump. That was like twenty twenty places. Was that Kaijo is going as well? Of course it's not gonna happen like that. Shirogane and the others couldn't make it. <laughs> wow. Designation. Hmm. How does she hold all of that in her head? <laughs> so Fujiwara didn't know, huh? Doesn't know? Felt very um Shinomiya like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so she's just tired. She's already run out of run out of brain juice. Ooh, which means best shit me. That would feel so surreal to him. Just like the time that he went and she was sick. <laughs> well, that's a neat trick.
Such a great, <laughs> such a great brother sister relationship. Oh no. Because he's too shy to. Did you fall asleep? <laughs> A slight misunderstanding. Oh, I'm going to have to pause to look through that. I think all of the faces that we see are like, you know, actual other, you know, as classmates, you know, other students that we've seen. Are we meant to recognize all of them? Miss Herthaka lives in Yamate, Naka Ward, Yokohama City, a fairly well-bred girl. I Hayasaka, school camouflage, popular girl mode, a spirited girl with a penchant for fashion and for breaking the rules at school. Mr. Hathaka, descended from Irish immigrants who fled their homeland during the Great Potato Famine. I Hayasaka in Shinomiya family mode, a cool-headed maid who can pull off anything. Oh, that's well, oh, that's funny. I like that. Okay, so that's it for episode four, and that was a that was a really fun one. I liked it. The first part, which actually was, I think half of the episode, maybe even more, was the focus on Shinomiya and Ishigami again, and I really like their. I like their interaction. Something that came about first from season one, I think it was. That was the one where she helped him to study. 
And that was sort of the start of their, you know, this kind of interesting relationship between them, where she's supportive and, I don't know, slightly terrifying, I guess, as far as being a taskmaster in keeping him on track and helping him to study and all that. But, yeah, that was the start of something interesting, something where she believes in him enough to think that, you know, he can better himself and he, the fact that he wants to better himself because someone believes in him and they also had this discussion between themselves where you know well i mean it was because of the what's her name tsubame i think who he he clearly has some oh what is it who he clearly has you know an infatuation with that you know hopeless sort where You've got the, you've got the attractive, and you know very friendly, girl who is you know friendly with everyone, and therefore you know admired and liked by a lot of people. It can feel kind of hopeless to be attracted to that sort of person, but Shinomiya discovers that he is, you know, attracted to her, and instead tries to spur him on. You know, I don't know whether. It, I guess, like, on one side, you could say, I don't know, maybe it's unhealthy that she, you know, takes that sort of interest in him, him in Ishigami's, um, you know, in trying to, like, improve or fix Ishigami. But, I don't know, I think it's actually really sweet, you know, because she she does think that he can be better. And I like, you know, I really, I really like that. And how in the episode, you know, it said the reason that he studied so hard again wasn't just because of the, you know, trying to impress Tsubame or whatever, but because he wanted to show that, you know, Shinomiya's effort, the fact that she was willing to put in the effort into trying to help him with his studies isn't wasted. And, you know, we can see from both sides that, and he, and he was, you know, so frustrated with it. But at the same time, not. It was. It was like. It seemed like a good frustration. You know, it's one where he was upset because, well, he was hoping for something, you know, a bit of a fantasy where, oh, okay, if I just like study hard now, you know, at this point in time, you know, I'll be able to just unbelievably shoot right to the top. And well, he didn't quite do that, but he made a respectable increase. He put in work and he got. A better rank this time. So I imagine that if he continues, then he should be able to do it. And he's decided that's what he wants to do. He said it. Shinomiya seems to be keen on helping him to achieve that. And I think that's good. It also, you know, provides plenty of humor just in the way that she is, you know, so strict with him. So there's potential for more, you know, funny moments to come out of that. Actually, when I think about the episode, maybe that actually was a part one and part two, even if it wasn't labelled part two um, in the title. It felt so long because that was actually both Shinomiya's demand and Yu Ishigami wanting to prove himself worthy. And then, yeah, the third section was the sleepover, which was more just kind of, you know, a fun thing. We got to see, you know, some Fujiwara and Shinomiya, you know, interaction again. A little bit more on how Hayasaka actually manages to do her job. Because Hayasaka is there to assist and help um, Shinomiya, but she tries to do it, you know, in secret, you know, particularly at school. And that led to some, you know, funny interactions as Fujiwara... Not so not so hot for him, but more I think Fujiwara is just enamored with the idea of relationships. You know, that's why she's got the whole love detective thing. What gets her all excited isn't necessarily a hot boy, you know, or a hot girl, but just knowing that there's, you know, a relationship or a potential relationship or a scandal, something like that. 
those things seem to make her very excited. Um, and two, we also saw Kay, Shirogane's sister, who I think is a good, she's a good sister in that she's nosy about her brother's business. I mean, you might say that's bad, but, you know, the, if she didn't care, you know, if she, like, really disliked her brother a lot, then she probably wouldn't give a crap. But she, you know, she's nosy and she wants to know about these things. She, you know, craves it. I think it said that in a previous, um, I think last season. She's got that interesting relationship with her brother where, you know, she, well, you know, she's a kind of a rebellious teenager or whatever, but at the same time, she's like, I want to know what my brother's doing. Um, and so again, you know, Fujiwara managed to tire Shinomiya out to the point of breaking down some of those walls that are naturally up when she's got enough energy to maintain them. And we got to see that, you know, sort of like very sweet and vulnerable, almost like, I guess, childlike whimsical side of Shinomiya, the one which isn't, you know, sort of scheming or thinking, like overthinking like so hard or anything. And that was a probably a very confusing, but you know, nice interaction um, that she had with Shirogane over the phone, although you know, albeit truncated <laughs> because she fell asleep. But um, yeah, again, another episode which just sort of left me, you know, smiling. Really happy to just you know sit back and keep keep watching, seeing where all of this goes, both these sorts of threads, as well as just, you know, all of the silliness. It's so good at weaving it all together, I love it. Anyway, that is it for episode four. Please leave a comment, tell me what you thought about the episode. Um, if you liked this reaction, then, you know, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button, although I'd still prefer you tell me why, so that, you know, I can improve. And yeah, otherwise, take care and I'll see you next time. See you later.